time is now 7.30, and I call this monthly meeting to order. Caitlin, can you proceed with the roll call, please? Trustee Doherty? Here. Trustee Fugani? Here. Trustee Humphreys? Here. Uh, Trustee Morrow has resigned, so he is currently vacant. Uh, Trustee Stapleton? Here. And President Graver? Here. Thank you very much. And I'd now like to welcome the visitors to our meeting. Thank you very, very much for your interest in the library. Now on to agenda item number four, approval of minutes. Do you have any questions or comments regarding last month's minutes? And Caitlin has yes. one correction. Yes. There is one correction <laughs> from me. Made by me. Uh, the, let's see, item number 5B in March 2019 invoices. It, the motion was not passed by voice vote. It was a roll call. So I just need to change that in minutes. Agenda item number five, financial matters. Julie, let us know how we're doing. Sorry. My husband should better than to text me during board meetings. <laughs> 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 um, so, but I should also remember not to leave it on paper. So, uh, financial matters. Um, one big thing to remember for the month of March is that it was a three payroll month, so that is one significant difference um, that uh, is on there. Uh, and then if you all have a new invoice edit list, the only change on that list is the invoice for Gray House Publishing, which actually was reduced. There was a an invoice for a database renewal that was pulled um, pending a decision on they thought they were renewing, and then there was an issue with um, prior statistics from that database company, so they wanted to review that before deciding. So that was an 11th hour change. And then um, things are going along swimmingly on both the uh, revenue and um, expenditure side. If there are any other questions, there was one from the in one thing that I did not see on the invoices of note, and that was the KI invoice, which was these tables. Oh. So your new tables in the meeting room, which are um, excellent, it, as you can see from the ones lined up against the wall. They are now on casters, and they also um, the table the tabletops flip up, and so they nest very nicely for storage. They are much, much easier to use than the old folding tables that were very handy. So seven total? That's what I see. Uh, no, actually, there are 14 of them okay. total. There are some in the yeah. closet and some in the back. Center legs. Thank you for that. That was going to be one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't recognize that invoice. Yes. Mm -hmm. President Graver, I would make a motion to approve the payroll for $325,086.26 and the invoice is $198,472. I have a second that motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve the financial matters as presented that has been seconded. Caitlin, could you proceed with the roll call, please? Yes. Trustee Doherty? Yes. Trustee Gagani? Yes. Trustee Humphreys? Yes. Trustee Stapleton? Yes. President Graver? Yes. Thank you very much. The financial matters have been approved as presented. We're now on to agenda item number six, public comment on agenda items. Do we have any public comment on agenda items? Okay, thank you. We're now on to agenda item number seven, public comment on other library business. Do we have any public comment on other library business? All right, we're now on to agenda item number eight A, new business, opening of closed session minutes and destruction of verbatim recordings. Julie, can you describe what we're doing here? So, um, every 18 months, the board reviews any closed session minutes that are still closed to the public. At this point, we only have one um, set of minutes under that, and that is from August 23rd, 
2017, and that was a discussion under the personnel exemption. Um, you all, the board members, received copies of that closed session minutes um, prior to the meeting so that you can look and see if you believe that it is appropriate to open those at this time. Also, um, after 18 months, any closed session must be recorded in a verbatim uh, audio recording, that's by law, um, audio or video, and after 18 months, those can be destroyed um, and just the minutes retained. Uh, we do have minutes for all of the, the cassette tapes um, that are listed here on your agenda. We found quite a few uh, old closed session minutes, uh, cassette tapes, and that includes the entire director search for my predecessor, as well as the entire director search for when they hired me. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, there, there are a whole bunch of tapes that we can get rid of. And uh, I did send that out to the board in advance if anybody had wanted to come and play with the tape recorder. That was <laughs> such a fun time <laughs> listening to all of those. That's going. Really yeah. 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 interesting for you to listen to the, the board's thought process. It's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> And it looks like you're recommending that we destroy all of the recordings yes. and then also, and I think that this is... Including the closed session um, that we will be opening the minutes for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> it looks like this is something that's specifically authorized by open Illinois meetings. statute. Yes, yeah. by Open Meetings Act, it, that 18 month threshold is where you're at, and we just hit 19 months for those August 2017 meetings, so. What would be a circumstance in which we wouldn't want to get rid of one? Other than there, something like ongoing litigation. Ongoing, <laughs> ongoing litigation, <laughs> um, I, if there's ever like a real estate transaction okay. or something or to that effect, yeah. Okay. And then um, occasionally like a very sensitive personnel matter might stay closed for longer. So the, so the minutes for August 23rd would actually be open. Open to the public. All of the and all recordings of, would be destroyed. Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on this? Do we have a... Yeah, I, I moved to destroy the recordings and open the minutes of August 23rd, 2017 as discussed. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion that has been seconded to destroy all the verbatim minutes listed under EA and to open the minutes at August 23rd, 2017. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Okay, agenda item 8A has been approved. We're now on to 8B, authorization to proceed with public bid for LED replacement lighting and fiction section. So this is an item that was noted on our tour um, when we did our committee of the whole meeting months ago uh, as, a, as a full board and we were looking at the um, non-fiction stack lighting as opposed to fiction lighting which looked terrible in comparison. So um, after going back and looking at our budget for capital replacement this year and our HVAC project coming in under bid and a bunch of other projects um, coming in, uh, being incorporated into the operating fund, etc. Um, we have proposed, uh, and Ian, is, Ian Noor, our building operations manager, is here to answer any questions, but we are proposing to move up the swap out of those lights. Um, they are currently high efficiency fluorescents, and those would be swapped for LEDs. The exact same fixture that we have just put over the non-fiction non section, I have to get these correct, uh, and it's a one-for-one one swap out since those are already those linear uh, and the right size 
uh, to be replaced by the LEDs, but at this point we can still get the exact same fixture that we've just put over the non-fiction section. So it's it's really about making that, that transition from fluorescent to LED and to be able to match uh, the lighting in the other. This is not absolutely essential, but it's something that would be done eventually and it's um, really just moving it up from 2021 or 2022 to this year. Can you, oh sorry. Oh, I was just curious um, why this round would not be covered under the rebates for Because they're already, they're the high efficiency fluorescence oh. and there it's the same number of, Ian, correct me if I'm getting this wrong. It's, it's the same linear footage. Um, the lumen output is higher because that's what was spec through product design when we did the 2018. So in order to match apples with apples, we have to go with exactly the same lumen, the same wattage output. Um, so there's there's really not a, a cost savings. Yeah. So even though they're higher efficiency, the, the output the wattage the wattage equation is yeah. still about the same. Can you remind me what was the threshold for having or for publicly bidding these sorts of projects? Um, the threshold is twenty five thousand. Okay. Um, so this one will. That's why we went ahead and got a quote mm -hmm. from um, one of our electrical contractors just to see what ballpark we were playing in because mm -hmm. we, you know, that's one of those. I don't know where this project would right. come in. I think why should we not do it? Yeah. I mean, this was this was that my feeling. I mean, this is in the capital replacement fund uh, budget for you know when we established it for a ten year period. We've I think everything has gone very well. Yes. To date, yes. Um, we've been under budget. This is we're, we'd be spending money now that essentially we wouldn't have to spend later. Yes. Um, and so I think that you know we've we, we've been going through this process. Let's, I would. Yes. Suggest we just continue moving forward with it. I'm just wondering if there's any other area outside of comment that we could try to find some environmental friend. And I don't know the industry. They, they all go through the same program. Okay. Got it. Because Commonwealth Edison is our electrical provider mm -hmm. from the state of Illinois. Even if you go through like an Energy 360, they still do the same paperwork that I do. Um, it's just now I'm going through a third party and I'm paying a third party to do the same thing that I, I can do myself. Got it. And if it turns out to be the public bids come back wildly different, mm -hmm. then we can yeah. just say no. My initial number from Fitzgerald's, um, who's done, who did our 2014 project, came in at 57,000. Um, I'm pretty confident with public bid we can come in anywhere between five to ten hundred. Calendar? Oh, calendar? Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought you said cost. Um, right now I've got the scope of work and uh, the advertisement for bid actually ready to go. Um, all I need to do is input dates. Uh, I was looking at as early as tomorrow to put up the advertisement for bid and get it over to Shaw Media um, and then go ahead and do pre-bid walkthrough. Um, about the first, second week of May, um, and then go ahead and open up uh, bids at the end of May so we can presume at the June board meeting. So hopefully by end of summer. Figure it's it's about six to eight week lead time on these lights um, from KSA or, or a substitute that is, again, apples for apples, same lumen, same wattage, same footprint. Um, again, there's some different players we can go with. Um, as far as manufacturers, but the key is they have to they have to match color temp and everything else like that. Otherwise, it's going to stand out being so close. Well, that's so, why I was asking actually about the public bid threshold because we just went through this. Whether we could, whether there were any just savings we could extract by going back to the same people and essentially trying to add on to that particular project, but yeah, maybe too late. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kind of emotion. Uh, a motion to proceed with a public bid for LED replacement lighting in the fiction section. So moved. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to proceed with a public bid for LED replacement lighting in the fiction section that has been seconded. 
Um, I think we should just do a roll call on this one. Sure. Trustee Doherty? Yes. Trustee Devani? Yes. Trustee Humphreys? Yes. Trustee Stapleton? Yes. President Rickford? Yes. Thank you very much. We have approved the authorized authorization to proceed with public bid for LED replacement lighting in the fiction section. Just clarify that I want to make it look like we're rushing through on this. I, I just I just feel it from both an architectural appearance um, reason and also it's a convenience thing. It makes it easier on our patrons. That's why we did it in the other area. That's why we're doing this. All we're doing is accelerating. I agree. It was also a smart way not to do it all at one time. We took a step to see that we liked it, and now a second step. So. All right, we're now on to agenda item 8C, um, which is a very interesting topic that apparently Ian wanted to discuss, the uh, bloodborne <laughs> pathogens policy update. Right. Well, Julie, how, how would you like to proceed on this one? Well, this is a straight up replacement of the entire bloodborne pathogen section. Um, we do have, there have been some updates uh, to the requirements which have led to this new policy and so this will bring us into compliance by updating the policy. Um, in particular, uh, the um, control measures and the uh, training and immunization, immunization. Uh, sections have been updated um, with more site-specific information in this version. So what I thought might be new is the incident report. <laughs> you just said that, I'm very sorry. <laughs> 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 I just repeated it again. <laughs> I don't know if I caught that there was an incident report, which I think is great that you have to go to administration and fill out an incident report. Yes. But then, um, I guess a secondary question is on immunization, that are we tracking immunization for the staff prior so that we know that? Um, we are not, that is immunizations only in the cases of probable, of possible okay. exposure. Okay. So it's an, yeah, it's an after the fact. Okay. Item. And so this does uh, more fully outline that um, we did not actually say that in the normal library operations they're not likely um, to involve circumstances exposing uh, our staff to bloodborne pathogens. That's a, a new part, um, as well as the control measures, um, having personal protective equipment in, um, involved or in, available and. Um, washing, it, it's just a little more specific. And I am very impressed if you wrote this yourself, Ian. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, you know, what's the difference, but you've answered that question, so I think it's just fine. The uh, immunization is uh, something we should offer. Yeah. FPD immunizations are not cheap necessarily to an individual, it's a series of shots. We should definitely offer them in an exposure situation. There's no immunization for HIV. Okay, do we have a motion to approve agenda of eight C bloodborne pathogens policy update? Before that, real quick, is a tetanus shot for is that also a bloodborne pathogen? Tetanus? No. 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 Uh, no. Uh, encountered with rusted metal, anything like that, mm -hmm. um, would be tetanus shot, but no blood. Uh, that, everything that I've looked up on OSHA standards and all the research that I did when I was preparing this, nothing was said about tetanus anywhere in it. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> rusted metal, that would probably be a workers' comp yeah, situation. More or less. This is kind of a leftover procedure the age crisis back in the 80s and 90s when it was a scary, very scary time. It's not so scary anymore, but it's still good idea to have it down. Yeah. Well, in the training aspect of the system. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, people aware of the precautions. Mm -hmm. So I will move to approve the blood-borne pathogen policy changes. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion to approve the bloodborne pathogens policy update at agenda item 8C that has been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Okay, we have approved the bloodborne pathogens policy update. Thank you very much. We're now on to agenda item 8D, the notary policy update, uh, section 5.14. Yes, and we would like to add one item uh, to the list of items notary staff are unable to notarize, and that would be the I-9 employment eligibility form. Um, that form uh, requires that it be completed by an employer <coughs> or authorized representative, and there is actually no space on the form for a no notarization section. So. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're not acting as authorized representatives. This must come up from time to time. This has come up numerous <laughs> times <laughs> in the last, yeah, any actually, it even came up. You seem like an authorized person. <laughs> I have actually done so. <laughs> <laughs> but we, then we started really looking into it, like, mm, that's a little dicey, so, yeah. Well, yeah. it doesn't have to be noticed. It's not even required to be notarized, but a lot of companies actually you know, instruct their employees to go to a notary to have it done. Mm -hmm. But then there's just that. there's a disconnect there. It's, yeah, um, we're not a part of the company. <laughs> to certify that this person can work in the United States. <laughs> Is this posted out on the website so that you can save yourself some phone calls up with? Oh, absolutely. It will be. So yes. It yes. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I move to make the um, notary policy update in, the, or in section 5. Okay, we have a motion to approve the notary policy update that has been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Okay, we have approved the notary policy update. Thank you very much. We're now on to agenda item number nine, unfinished business, which does not appear there is any. So we're now on to agenda item number 10, library director's report. Um, Probably the number one thing you are all waiting to hear about is our HVAC project. Ian and I did meet with Bob St. Mary from Amara Engineering and uh, Joe Sinise and Mike Sinise from Mechanical Concepts of Illinois at <coughs> 4 o'clock this afternoon. Um, I also had a phone call with uh, our attorney, uh, actually Gregory Smith from Clyde Thorpe and Jenkins, um, that Walsh was unavailable to discuss the project and where we stand. So Thursday of last week, we had what was supposed to be our pre-construction meeting for a May 15th start to the rooftop unit replacement project. <coughs> we had at no time prior to that since uh, the release of the submittals in February heard anything from Mechanical Concepts about the timeline as previously discussed and starting on May 15th. On Thursday, Mechanical Concepts told us that the HVAC units would ship from the manufacturer on June 10th and would arrive for installation on June 13th. Our current con our contract with Mechanical Concepts uh, says substantial completion by June 5th. <coughs> As you know, that is uh, right about the time school lets out and right when, before summer reading starts. June 13th is smack dab in the middle of the beginning of summer reading. Our contract also states 100% completion on the RTU project by June 14th, if they were to undertake the installation. <coughs> June 13th, this would in no way happen. <laughs> so, um, we started, after that meeting, we started investigating. Um, Bob St. Mary, our, uh, the engineer from Alara, went back to his contacts at Train, which is the manufacturer. Um, because they are our units or the customer, they can speak directly to us about what happened, <coughs> when, what was ordered when, um, and we found out that originally um, Mechanical Concepts did place the order um, 
and their original ship date was April 15. Mechanical Concepts then contacted them a number of weeks ago, without our knowledge, and told Train that the ship date should be in June. And moved it. Have you heard of that sound that they were busy? Um, so at today's meeting, uh, the gentleman indicated that there was a, a health incident of one of the owners of Mechanical Concepts um, who had a stroke this spring and that the project was transferred to um, Joe Sinise and that he, uh, he admitted that it was his mistake and it was entirely his fault. So, after having spoken to the attorneys, we offered Mechanical Concepts two alternatives. Um, to cancel the contract, and I did forward to you all the email that laid out all of the steps for doing that, or to do a contract addendum to extend the contract, the um, deadlines for the contract, and to include an indemnity for mechanical concepts to pay for any and all repairs to the current rooftop units to keep them functional between June 5th and the time of the installation. Our proposed date to them for the installation is Tuesday, September 3rd. Um, that puts us past all June, July, and August are really non-starters for the library. Um, we are open seven days a week. This is our busiest time of year. We have multiple um, programs. The discoveries had already gone out in the mail by the time we had heard any of this. Uh, so not only does it contain the information that this project is supposed to happen in May, which it won't, um, it also contains all of those June programs. And so uh, at the <coughs> meeting, when we proposed our two options, Mechanical Concepts came back with the, well, we could do it on a Saturday. Well, for us, that doesn't matter. We're open on Saturday, and we're busy on Saturdays. They could do what on Saturday? They could do the installation. <laughs> what, exactly. is, what is the duration of the installation? How long are we down it without would, air conditioning? How long? Uh, about six, right. about six to eight hours. Yeah. So uh, the crane was unfortunately with how big it is, it cannot drive on the road at night. Um, the units would have to be here the morning of, the crane would have to leave the yard right at sunlight to get here. I'm not sure where they're sourcing it from. The yard could be 15 minutes away, it could be, you know, who knows. Um, chances are they're gonna get somebody local. Um, so as far as the disconnect goes, it's fairly easy. We don't have any gas lines that run up there. It's, it's just electric. These things are self-contained. So once you break loose the flex, you disconnect the electric, and you separate the return duct and the supply duct from the unit, it's ready to haul off. Mm -hmm. So we are replacing all the springs um, just because if one is bad, chances are they're all bad. And we don't want to chance that. We don't want any vibration, anything like that. So about two hours to replace all the springs. Uh, they're just bolted on. They're not welded on. So that makes it even easier. Um, and then drop the new units in place, get the electric tied in along with all the duct work, um, which these are the same sealed units, so everything should line up perfect. Um, I, I, would, I would safely say count on seven to nine hours. There's break times in there because they're union guys. Um, so. You're saying if everything goes perfect. If everything goes perfect and, 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 and the stars align, yes. Seven, one seven to nine hour, one day job. And in your experience? In my experience, nothing ever goes 100% perfect. Um, you, have to, you have to throw in that fluff time in there that something's just, you know, it could be a windy day and the crane, you know, maybe it's not landing just right. It takes a little bit longer for them to land it on the, on the curb. Um, you just got to take in some variables. Uh, I mean, I would definitely dedicate a whole day to it. Now, whether or not they go beyond their, their normal eight-hour day, that's on them because the heat's kind of on them. Um, so they're going to want to get it done quick. 
Is that crane, is that, does that really close the parking lot? It does. Yeah, we're going to have four semis out there, two of which have the new units on them, and then two of which that are empty, so that way they can take the old ones, throw it on the empty semi, and then bring up the new ones. It sounds like a video opportunity. It to really educate is. educate everyone how this is done. Can we get like a board up on the roof? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be there so I, I can film it for you and we can, we can, we can show it at the next board meeting or whatever the, film the board the meeting is in follow. Yeah. So. What was the, what was, what, what were the thoughts on the September 3rd day? So Mechanical Concepts asked uh, to get back to us tomorrow on our options. I'm fairly certain that there will they will come up with some sort of third option. We'll see what it is. I highly doubt that there is anything that they could propose that would be acceptable. Ian and I, in our discussions, the only acceptable way to do it in June would be for them to start in the late afternoon on a Saturday and do and start super early on a Sunday morning and have us open by one o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. And I don't just don't see that happening. It's just too scary for me. Um, as Ian says, things never go perfect. And our staff and customers I mean, will be closed. It, it could be closed, but it could be not the name. But the difference between May and September is a toss up, I guess. But, uh, was there a big hold up that they would have to have custody of those units until September? Um, actually, uh, we're not sure what their biggest hold up is still. at Perfect. the moment. Um, and it, it would be um, train would hold them. Uh, That's typically what happens, uh, and typically train charges for yeah. such a thing. Yeah. However, we're still at the place in the manufacturing cycle where they could hold them without a cost at this point. So, so my understanding of what you said at the outset that this was just a mistake. Somebody just made a mistake. They, and they did not discover the mistake until we discovered it. Yeah, until they sat in the meeting and told us, oh, June. Well, this this to me is, um, it's different than like not, like missing a deadline. It's like they they proactively called and said, do not deliver these. Oh, yeah. Like knowing that, I mean, so, so that to me is almost like a reason just to cancel the contract. I mean, that's, I, 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 I think that either we go with September with what we want, or it's all, it, we're not moving forward. So those are the two options I did. <laughs> well, these RTUs don't sit on a shelf someplace. They're made of work. Yes. And I, before I discussed, before I had an opinion on, on canceling it, I need to know how likely are the old ones continuing to work and how long would it take us to renegotiate it. I, I, I uh, these, these units were made for us. Uh, there is somebody else in the world that can use them, but it may take them a while to figure out who, and so there's, there's, there's cost involved to train, and therefore to the other company, so on. Um, my initial inclination was to cancel. But I don't want to delay the project. I mean, the reason we're doing it is because these things are old and we might not have. But the way this option two or the option one of the contract is written, if something happens to them during the summer, they'll pay to have them fixed if they accept option two. Or but it's also going to be But if we cancel the contract, that's sort of off the table, probably. And then we start over. Yes. And I don't know. And we're likely. I don't know when we could get. Yeah. 
I mean, maybe train would negotiate something and with mechanicals, and we'd end up with the same boxes someday. But does, well, does, it, does Bob have an experience with mechanical concepts? Before? I mean, what, what were his thoughts on this? I've I've dealt with them, and the the problem why we couldn't. We couldn't get away from this because they were they were ironclad. They had all their paperwork in order. We did not have viable cause to exclude them as a better. Um, my personal, where when I worked with them with Kane County, um, that that's not enough to exclude them from the bidding process because that's just my opinion of them. Um, I, I had a similar instance at Kane County, and I, it was it was a it was a lengthy push. I'll put it that way. Um, we were supposed to have stuff done in April. It wasn't done until October. Mm -hmm. See, that's that goes back to kind of my original point. It's like if you if you have a lot of experience with somebody and they they always deliver, and then one time they don't. Okay, like I understand that, but it's harder to get over like the one time that I've had experience with that. They just called and canceled our delivery because there was some issue they were having. Unfortunately, this is the reality of lowest responsible bidder. Um, responsible bidder. Uh, you have to have a reason to disqualify a bidder. They had everything and, we in order. Had, and everything was in order with their bid, so we had no recourse to disqualify them as a bidder, even though there was some personal experience that was negative, they were still the lowest responsible bidder. Um, at this point, it would take us a significant amount of time to go through the rebid process, and one of the complicating factors is that the rooftop units are not the only portion of this contract. That's true. The yeah, boilers, boilers and, and the boilers. control system are also part of this contract, and they've already obtained the boilers, and that's actually the longest time period piece of this project because there is a considerable amount of repiping that needs to occur within the boiler room. They're ready to go with the boilers. So my thoughts twofold are about the temperature difference in June. Don't get me on so fast it's about very much more <laughs> but I think that no, um, I think that I see a shift of September can be more warmer than June lately. If you really think about kids being back in school, I always feel like September would have been a great June day to go in. But then, um, secondly, your time is money, though, the whole process of bidding this all out. Yes. Um, and, and if they came in saying, we will you know, pay for maintenance fees to get you through to September, that's still a ton of hassle and time. And I would think that dealing with them to actually get them to pay, I mean, that, that's a process in and of itself. Well, the attorney has suggested a letter of credit um, in order to have that to back up the, um, the repairs, any repairs that are needed. Um, they were already talking about doing it in, uh, in form of credits toward a payment to them in the end, so I'm sure that that part we can okay. negotiate okay. out with our attorney. Well, how long will um, they negotiate that? Did, did you mention the letter of credit to them? Yes, and, okay. and they so were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and potentially the idea, yeah, now the idea here <laughs> would be to um, get that addendum prepared in time for the main meeting of this board. Um, the one thing about the September date is that they are now very uh, motivated to do this all in one day instead of what they originally talked about for the May or June date, which was to do the disconnect the day before and have us without, um, like in the late afternoon, and then have us without um, air flow in, in the evening and then just being closed the second day. The way that we were talking about it today for September 3rd was to just be closed the one day. Air goes off, nobody's in the building, they, they do their thing. By the next day, theoretically, we are opening at 9 a.m. If you go back out to bed, the time frame with someone new is gonna be September. More than likely. Well, so September, October, right, right. Depends on whether they have to go to another and get so a box built. Then you're using the first vendor to cover.
cover still expenses if something happens in that time period. But if we if we cancel the contract, then we have no recourse with mechanical comps, or should we need to do any repairs to keep us going? Um, at this point, mechanical concepts is motivated to make good on the contract because if we cancel the contract, we also um, secure take their surety bond. Uh, that they put in with the public bid, and that has a long-term consequence with them because their bond um, company then has raises their rates significantly for every subsequent bond because they've actually had to draw on one. So that that is a long-term consequence to the company should the contract be. And I think I think that sort of the bottom line from my perspective is that I really trust in your judgment on this, given the fact that you're here every day, you know the timing of when things are supposed to happen. And so, I mean, if if we believe they can do the project and they have the you know the, the wherewithal to get it done, it's just yeah. in finding the, the right time period to do that. Yes. So we are, at this point, awaiting their response. Um, and I've been in touch with the attorneys at Kleinthorpe um, again this afternoon following our meeting. Um, and they are awaiting my call tomorrow to get started on an addendum. Um, should we be doing one? And uh, from that point forward, it will be a negotiation and making sure that uh, it's got all the pieces that we want it to. Were the decision makers from mechanical at the meeting, or were these the people that, what was, and you're, you're trying to read between the lines, what was your reading of them? Are they going to pick one of these options, or are they going to come back with a third option? And what is that third option that it could be? I think and they'll probably come back with another third option that is something like doing it on a Saturday or doing it on a Sunday. Um, we'll, we'll see what they come up with. Quite, quite frankly, I do not believe, I don't think that they were ready for us to walk into today's meeting as prepared as we were and having already spoken to the attorneys about what is our recourse as far as the contract, to knowing all of our dates, knowing everything that we did about from training and having already gotten the paper trail from training on what happened when, um, and having done our due diligence with train about the possible, you know, is there any way to get these sooner? No. Is there any, you know, what What else? Yeah. So, um, Which they, means you have them in a good position for getting what you need, potentially a better position than you did prior to just wait, having them with a bit. Yes. Is the boiler work going to be done at the same time? I mean, not the same day. If, uh, no, I mean, if. Will they do the boiler work under the old schedule? Or? That's what I would end up doing is, is just schedule. Uh, I would pretty much flip flop. Um, I mean, granted, right September is not, you know, August, but uh, I would just end up doing all the, which the boiler is the meat of it, all the repiping, everything like that. We'll do that first, um, and then we'll fall back on the on the rooftops. I mean, the RTUs go in, and we're out of air for a day or two. Right. The boiler work, we're out of heat for a lot longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, I, I'm checking the weather. Um, with the trends and everything. Um, May 15th was, was again, a, 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 a start date that was picked for the boilers. That's that pretty safe time. You can go ahead and shut down for the season and you'll be okay because um, your lows aren't getting anywhere to where they were, you know, the month previous. Um, you know, if, if we end up going still with, with mechanical concepts, that boiler work could start earlier. Um, I'm looking at May 1st right now. You know, temps are going to be in the high 70s, lows are, Lows in the evening are in the high 60s. Uh, well, well, they've already got the boilers. They've, they've got it's already in town. They're, so they're ready to go. They can do that whenever they've got the labor available. Yep. And I think we would urge them to do that as early as 
Absolutely. But is this, but is it a single contract or was it? Yes, it's yeah. a single contract. It's, all one. Yeah. it's a single contract that's got some different timelines and dates as far as substantial completion and 100% um, completion for each portion of the project. Right. Okay. So that's why I was wondering, do we, if we're going to cancel it, we cancel the whole versus canceling part of it and not the other part? That's why I'm a, if, I would be a little. If we cancel the contract, you have to cancel the contract. Which is what I would do. Which, which is, yes. Then you maybe rebid something in two pieces yeah. or you know, after that. Yeah. Do we. Um, There's probably cost efficiencies in one. That's the idea. <coughs> I also understand that. Well, part of me wants to walk away. And yet. Human beings, human beings sometimes make mistakes. I'm amazed that that mistake was made and not discovered internally by them in such a long time. Obviously, a small, there aren't a whole lot of people there. But, and I'm not suggesting forgiveness particularly direct, totally, you know, I'm not going to forget about it, I can forget it, I can't forget it. But, but from our staff, work involved and there's cost associated to rebidding this whole project, whether it be done in one piece or two pieces or whatever. Um, I want to hear what they say, obviously, and you want to, and I trust you guys. Um, I think we want need to find out what they say and if there was a way, if it would be any more efficient if we could somehow do this before a month from now, resolve this before a month from now, I'd like to consider that, either through contingent motions or that would be a special meeting. Unfortunately, this is not on tonight's agenda. Um, so we would have to have either a special meeting or take it up in May. At this point, what I think is probably our best recourse um, is to see what they say tomorrow. If they are willing to take the addendum option under the parameters that we have laid out for mechanical concepts, that I will move forward with our attorney in drafting that to our satisfaction. I can share those drafts with you. And that will go on the May agenda. Um, I'm figuring it'll take us about that long get it done anyway, so a special meeting at this point probably wouldn't um, wouldn't help us a whole lot. Although, if we get through the addenda information sooner, I can, of course, you know, send that out to you as well, if you want to. Well, if for some reason they come up with some technical or whatever reason that with what we're asking them to do, they can't get it done in time in order to do it in September, unless we start it sooner. I don't, I, I don't want us to be the reason for a slowdown. Absolutely. And if it means a special meeting, if it means it's on, I don't know what it would take. And I will be communicating that to you all. If I could delegate the whole thing to you, I personally would. Yeah. Unfortunately, but the contract addendum will happen. We can't do that.
start out into electric network again. So, okay. that's... Well, I think we've discussed that. Yeah. Um, and just wanted to point out that Grove Fest is not having a Thursday, um, so we don't have to take that back up. Um, I have been working through uh, the compensation system stuff and the um, minimum wage increases, and that, that's going to have a big impact on us, that minimum wage increase, and it will have um, an annual impact uh, between now and 2025 when minimum wage reaches the $15 an hour mark. So just be aware that as we're working toward budget season, that is coming. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jen Fredericks and our team who put together the service fair earlier in April on the 13th. We have 33 service organizations from throughout Downers Grove um, here in this room and throughout the lobby and throughout the library and there were big people were here. We had almost double our usual attendance for a Saturday, so that was <coughs> fantastic. Um, and it was just very, very well received. So kudos to Jen and Cindy Cotri and all the staff who worked so hard on that service fair because it was wonderful. I heard good reports on that. I ended up having to be out of town. I was a big happy person, but the concept was so beautiful and I think it came off yes. very well. And, uh, and our incoming mayor was here almost the entire time. And then there was one um, other. Is that piece. viewed as potentially a periodic event? We hope. Whether we it, I, I started to say it. annual, but. You know what, it might be. We'll see. Um, we had some feedback from other organizations saying that they were sorry that they weren't you know, invited to be a part of it in that next year, the next service fair that we have. So we consider you know, having them join. So the word has gotten out. Was it the non group? Yes. 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 And so I'm sure it, it took more work the first time than it will yes. using that this concept. Yes, a lot. We started, we started the process almost a year ago mm -hmm. by getting all this together of organizations and talking to the libraries with under, you know, with mm -hmm. them some more care. So it was really a lovely day. And then there was just one other question that I just kind of wanted to get your on as the board, um, there was some some discussion at the foundation board um, talking about the idea of public art in Downers Grove, and the, the idea was thrown around of a mural on the building. Now, this is not something that we have in any way taken to the village or anything. I just wanted to kind of get nodding heads or oh my god no or you know is is this something that this board would consider i sure consider it i think through a little yeah. bit about which the alley? where and how big yeah, like the, 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 the alley would be fun they, 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 no, they no, talked I'm, a I'm, lot they, they talked a lot about it and they really didn't say which side of the no. building <laughs> No, no, I, 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 um, I've seen, and, and I was involved in an organization that does this in Chicago, and I've seen some beautiful you know, street art and you know, murals and things like that that could look really nice. Um, so I would, I would consider it as well, just to see kind of what the concept is. Um, so that, yeah. I just think so many people have varying degrees of preference of their art. Exactly. So yeah. I see yeah. taking that a lot. Of, right. Yeah. That would be more risky than things in, in yeah. interior, but the alley really would be the best place. To <laughs> so, <laughs> it's an appropriate it place for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we have that all the murals in Dollar Grove. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, big ones. But big I am also actually picturing some right. more in a narrow area. Brighten up a little bit. Does the, the how are the discussions going with replacing the art, the interior art? Oh, <laughs> the art. Really? I'm so sorry about that. What's this happening? Uh, Distracting the mural. The, the art planning committee is, um, they have been trying to get a group gallery tour 
in Chicago together, and schedules just are not meshing. So they're kind of struggling with their process at the moment. They are scheduled to have a meeting next week. Well, one thing I was, well, I'll, I'll wait for my trusted comments. Sure. Mention something. So that was actually all I had other than, uh, oh, and that the possible movie screening fundraiser for the movie The Public, that looks like that may be going forward in the beginning of October. So stay tuned. So we're now on to agenda item number 11, trustee comments and requests for information. I just had one quick comment to follow up on what we were talking about with the other. I was just wondering if one, um, this I guess should be more direct into the our committee at the foundation, but just as, as a general thought, it affects the library obviously as well, is that space, whether that could be used for some sort of like competition between, you know, we have a lot of, you know, the high schoolers, you know, that put art on the walls here, whether there could, this idea is in its infancy, would have some sort of competition to put, like if your art wins the competition, it goes on that wall for a period of time, and they rotate periodically or something. This is, of course, until a more permanent piece is established. But um, I was just thinking of that as an alternative to having. I actually like the piece that's there now. <laughs> that's <laughs> not art. <laughs> they need to find something just They're like a that. Graphic. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> and it would require that much work because the high school kind of already displays certain ones that win according to their criteria, but you could move from the high school here yeah. from to the two high schools. But yeah, there's some outstanding art. Play at both high schools. Yeah. And there's some other schools in the area. It gives them a little more publicity. But, so. right. I, mm -hmm. I'm finished with my comment. Well, just a, just a, a comment. I'm, I'm a very, as most people understand, a pretty strong proponent of, of the um, public art in the library. And not to how I can to put it, not, not, not to reduce the importance or the quality of high school art, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about permanent professional, professional curated <laughs> art. And uh, at the moment, we're the only organ in the place in Dallas World that does that. Thank you very much. 